So how to get leads as a software agency? Hey guys, Jacob here, and today I want to talk a little bit about how to get leads, so potential clients for your software company. This this may work for the product company, but the best is the service company. So it, it's a software house. It's sometimes they call it software agency or a dev shop, right? So it might work also for you as, as a freelancer, but pretty much this is based on our company Delta Logic. If you are actually new to this channel, please subscribe because on this channel I'm pretty much sharing my journey of, of building the software agency from scratch, Delta Logic. So yes, in this video I just want to walk you through our last conference. So actually me and my team, we just came back to Poland from US. The conference was in Las Vegas. It was the Prospect show. On, on this conference, the, the pretty much all of the people around the niche that we are in, this is the niche of marketplaces, uh, in particular Amazon. Uh, but again, I actually did record one video about picking the right niche for your software business. So there's tons of them. Just pick one, stick to the one, and, and I guarantee you that as you build up this business knowledge, not only the coding skills, but also the business knowledge, you will be able to land more and more clients because they will see extra value proposition in your offer. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit on about this conference. So me and my team, we went there, we had the booth. So I actually did one video about the exact conference one year ago. Back then, me and my co-founder Chris, we were there just as uh, attendees. Uh, so we didn't have any booth. We just went there, get to know people from the Amazon community, learn about other companies that are there. And also we tried to sell our services last year. It worked not, not the best last year, but, but it worked out. But most importantly, last year we did our research on this conference and, and we immediately got the booth for this year. And I want to share with you what we learned, what did work out and what didn't work. First of all, let, 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 let me tell you how the trip went, right? So. Again, we were preparing for this conference for quite a while now because we had to actually get all of the company gadgets. We had to uh, get the booth. So uh, we had to contact the printing company, production company also for the booths, print material with our um, logo. We had to actually create the design, come up with catchy keywords that are there. Then again, company gadgets, we, we created everything custom. Uh, we had uh, like a very traditional poly suites called Krufki, which is I think called a little cows or something like this in English. Um, they had a promo code inside so people could immediately apply it for our consulting offer, for, for our co consulting packages that are available on our website. Other than this, we had uh, company hats, uh, we had uh, t-shirts, custom t-shirts, custom socks and some extra gadgets. But yeah, pretty much we, we had to prepare all of that. We took a few baggages with us and we begin our trip. So first of all, we drove from, from, from our office to, to Berlin airport. We actually were sleeping there for one night just to make sure that we will not miss our flight. Also, just to let you know, last year we actually missed our flight. So this year we were extra prepared for this because this year we had a lot of a lot to risk, especially that we invested so much money into the booth. Please also watch till the end and I will share with you how much we end up investing in the, in the whole trip. Anyway, we drove to Berlin, we stopped in the Moxie Hotel, we brainstormed a little bit, had a drink and begin our flight next day. So in order to transport the booth, we actually just took extra suitcases. We decided that we will actually take everything with us because it's just much safe than sending the pallet to the US and pick up it later on. So we did it. We flew from Berlin to London, London Heathrow Airport. We stayed there for I think three hours and then from Heathrow to Las Vegas. And actually it was like we were very exhausted. Fortunately, if you go from Europe to Las Vegas, you kind of go back in time. So we, we landed Friday evening and we still could go out, stay till, till the end of the night and then next day start the day uh, properly without having the jet lag. First thing we did, and this is a general recommendation for everyone that is going to US, we, we got a car. So last year we didn't rent a car for a whole trip, just for uh, two days, just to have some fun. This year we actually rented, I think that was a Jeep Gladi Gladiator, it's a, it's a very big truck. So we got it first day or actually the next day after landing. And, and we could easily move around different places. So 
one thing that we did is we actually went to Walmart to buy extra things for our booth, such as table, chairs, extra uh, charging cables, extenders, because they were just much cheaper to get them from Walmart than from the hotel, from the convention center. There was like one company that, that you could actually rent things out, but it was super expensive. So we just bought them. And we also bought the TV, which is crazy. But like, but the cost of TV, I think it was around $300 or something like this. And it was pretty good TV actually. So we had it also there. And again, it was cheaper than rented. Also, because we, there was a weekend, uh, we could prepare actually for the conference, write on the special conference app to people, ask them for meetings, reach out on LinkedIn. And of course, beforehand, we set up uh, dinners with our clients. So our client base is mostly US and Germany, but this conference is pretty well known worldwide. So people from all around the world go there from, from this space. And we, we have a lot of clients who were there. They also had the booths. So that was actually pretty crazy. But yeah, we, we planned the dinners, we planned the meetings, and we also had some fun on the on a weekend. We actually went to see the Hoover Dam. We were just driving around the desert, checking different places in Las Vegas. Overall, you know, we, we were we were kind of chilling out before the actual conference. And then Monday, we went to the conference, took the convention center, we stayed in Mandela Bay, and we started building up our booth. Took us some time. Um, for more experienced people, it's probably maximum one hour. I think we, we end up going to Walmart at least three times, buying additional things, because we are always forgetting something, and then building everything. I think we, we finished in around four hours, then we had the dinners with clients, because the actual conference was about to start the next day, right? So yeah, we went to casino, had some drinks and went to sleep pretty early because again, next day was pretty big. We had to be sharp and ready and, and wake up early to, to be the first, right? All right, so this is a conference day. We we woke up, we went to the booth and pretty much, it was our first time having the booth. So you're a team of four. So three of us, sometimes two of us were staying at the booth and then one or two of us were going to different booths, saying hi to our partners, getting to know more people, pretty much overall network. And now about staying at the booth, what was very important is that we had a very good location. It was located kind of in a in the beginning of the actual conference area and also in the middle, right? So everyone who was passing, they actually saw our booth, which was great. And then we had a very great uh, keywords. So in our case, we actually sell custom software solutions. So we are also asking people who are coming to our booth about the feedback, say, hey, why did you come up here? What made you come and, and talk to us? And they say, yeah, I saw I saw like a SaaS development, get rid of third party solutions, data extractions, workflow automation. So pretty much all of the words that mean something, because one thing that is important that not so many people knows what exactly is a custom software solution. So this translation layer is, is very crucial. Now, when it comes to staying at the booth, there were people coming to us. We always make sure that one of us is actually talking to someone. And very important thing is we were getting all of the information we could. We had a system that we actually created means that we were giving them business cards, inviting them on LinkedIn, taking all of the notes we can, also adding them to the Google spreadsheet because the actual work starts after the conference. Best thing that we could do is also that we were immediately scheduling next call with them, more like intro call, because obviously during the conference and especially on the booth, there's so many people, it's so crowded, you cannot really have that meaningful conversation. It's usually five to 10 minutes talk. And then, you know, they also want to see other booths and talk to other peoples and listen to different talks that were also done by many very influential people in this space. We got many leads. I, we actually end up going through them this week. So all of the work, hard work starts after the conference, after you come back, uh, then it's actually the, the action that you need to take, meaning you need to reach out to them. And again, if someone didn't schedule the call, this is the great time to do it right now, just after the conference. And of course, we thought that there were so many people interested, but the actual really great leads, I would say maybe it's uh, around 10 to 20%. The rest, maybe, you know, there will be something in, in, in the future, but like still in our business model, which is not that scalable because we built each software very tailored for client. We don't need that much, right? So again, if you are the product company, that may work out for you totally different. Then first day passes, we can have the dinners with our clients. In this case, we actually split into the group groups of two because there were 
so many of them and then the after parties so around conferences they're usually happening also different after parties so it's very important to to go to them not stay too long because after a certain hour everyone is actually getting <laughs> drunk and, and there's not that much of the business that is happening it's more usually just having fun which is also great the second day of the conference the, so this is actual third day but like the the actual second day that the booths were open. We were there again very early, continue the conversations with potential clients, adding them on LinkedIn, getting their business cards, scheduling the calls, and then around 2 p.m., 3 p.m., that was it pretty much. Like people started to pack up their booths by four, there was literally no, no conference, right? So we end up packing the booth around 4 or 5 p.m. We had a dinner with a client, then a very good thing that happened is that Rafi and Jakub so two of our team members, they flew to Dallas, Texas, and they had one day of workshop with one other client. They actually came back next day. So that was also a great usage of time since we are already in US, we could do the workshop on site with our client. Me and Chris, we went to the last after party and MGM grant, really great after party. And that was pretty much it from the conference. The next day we woke up, we also at the same time had to work in parallel and keep in touch with our team of developers and Poland and, and Germany. So pretty much that, that was full focus. Basically, if you go on such a business trip on a different continent with different time zones, you're pretty much all the time in, in a work, right? But actually Friday, once we finished all of the work, we also decided to have some extra fun. And again, we took our car and we were just driving around different places, a little bit farther from Vegas. We went to a place like Boulder City, we went to the Death Valley. We actually drove to Area 51, did some off-road and overall we had a lot of fun. It was great. Now, from, from some of the tips that I can give you also when it comes to the overall having the great conference experience, because I've recorded this video one year ago overall, but I would say that the principles stay the same. So if you're talking with someone, don't go immediately into the business. It, it doesn't make, really make sense. Try to build the, the actual connection with them. Try, try to get to know them, ask them about some things outside of the work. This always makes the conversation go much smoother if you actually are more human and then of course uh, jump to the business and, and see if there's a potential fit and don't try too hard. I think this is very important overall. If, if you are selling, the less you try, the better it is. And now if you are if you are actually in a certain niche, I, I definitely recommend to, to find some of the biggest company stands. So for example, that was the marketplace company. There was a Walmart and Amazon, actually Amazon selling partner API team. So we also went there. We already know them, but we, we came to them and we say, hi, how are you? Right. We always trying to build also the, the relationship there. So it's not only directly with the potential clients, but also building the relationship of, of the of the actual platform provider that, that you are working with. And that was it, guys. Now, as I promised by the end of the video, I wanted to share with you the overall, the investment size that we did. So investment into all of the gadgets, the booth, plane tickets, hotel, and of course everything in the Vegas, four people. And again, we were coming from Poland. So that was like a very, very long trip with some stops on the way, I think. The overall, and we've been there for around seven or eight days. The the investment that we did was around forty to fifty thousand dollars. So that was quite a big investment. And again, the return is not like immediate, meaning that it's not like one client that we close and the, the investment is back. It's more about the building the brand awareness, building your network, showing up, getting new potential leads, and of course the direct business that happened there because we also closed some deals directly from the Prosper show. So all of this, I would say it was definitely worth it. If we think about it, it's it's always the, the long term game that we play. So this is how at least I see this kind of uh, investments in, in our company. And one great thing that I can say is that we will be also attending Prosper show next year. We already have a booth reserved. So for everyone who, who is watching and have been on the Prosper show will be next year. We see each other definitely there. And yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. I love to record also those business videos where I share um, tips and tricks on, on running a software business. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.